Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. We are back again with Tower of Fantasy. And this is going to be playthrough number 45. We are going to be continuing with the story. So, uh, without further ado, let's go chat to ch chat, chat to show. <laughs> really said a naughty word there. I'd like to take the minute here to congratulate the Boca on winning the World Cup. Well done, boys. Well done. Is something bothering you, Shirley? Miss Lin has been filling me in on exactly what's going on with Dr. Rebilia these past few days. It looks like Miss Lyra and her colleagues might have found a way to rouse the doctor. Her neural activity is increasing every day. But we're all a bit worried about what form exactly our reunion will take when the good doctor wakes. These concerns have prompted Archon Larson to transfer the doctor to the Silver Coast Research Station. What do you think? Do you think Dr. Rubilia will be back to her old self? Or something other than human? I don't think the process has stripped Dr. Rubilia of her human capacity for reason and thinking. Her actions seem to have a clear purpose. Like how she sent a message to Lynn using the puppet singer. Or how she made contact with Ruby in a dream to try to transmit a message to Miroria. And when she bravely ventured alone into the abyss, she also left us with invaluable visual records in her lab and along the way. I think she must have prepared for the possibility that those who might come after her, like us, would need guidance. She must know what she's doing. Think of the sacrifices she's made to understand these gray space entities, and how horrible it must be to keep at arm's length, treated as something potentially dangerous and inhuman. I can't help feeling that we have not done right by her. It's a tough situation, but when she made these decisions, she must have had an inkling of what might happen. I just hope everything she's done will turn out worthwhile in the end. Executor, Miss Shirley, apologies for the intrusion. What is it, Lyra? I just picked up a message from the Silver Coast Research Station. Dr. Rubilia has awoken and revealed some very important information for all of us. Lynn is already on her way there, and I wanted to ask you to come with me to help assess the situation. Understood. We'll leave at once.
suppose we can just uh, teleport them. not actually used uh, Lingon in any gameplay or combat scenario yet so I'll be looking forward to doing that The doctor was only able to rouse herself briefly, which allowed for a short interaction with us. Then she returned to her isolation pod. She released some kind of black fog that has obscured all our attempts to observe what's going on inside the pod. Subsequent attempts at communication have met with no reply. I see. And so what did she tell you? 
She said that large numbers of gray space entities have been summoned by the Hive Mother and are heading for the deep ocean near Innis, where there are some things they are very interested in. What's this Hive Mother? A gray space entity that's higher up the chain of command? I'm afraid a definitive answer may require the Doctor's input. Our main concern right now lies in Innis. The Doctor has already warned us numerous times that the Second City is in extreme danger. That is, if we are to trust her words. Archon Larson has already put patrols near Innis on high alert. But recently, we haven't received any reports of a gray space entity intrusion, which is perhaps even more disconcerting than if we had. It's possible the gray space entities have found a way to cloak their arrival via an as yet undetected method. My next question would be, what exactly is attracting them to the area? Director Ava, did Rebilia say anything more detailed in regard to Ennis? No, and I'm afraid she did not appear to be in the best state of mind. She claimed to be suffering under the effects of the Hive Mother's will, and that she was not able to interact much at all with us as a result. Moreover, she soon disappeared back into the black fog I mentioned. Stasis chamber data anomaly. Miss Lynn, the doctors. I can hear you. Rubilia. Lynn, the hive mother can hear you too. Where is the Hive Mother? In my head, whatever I see, whatever I hear, she hears and sees. And I can't escape her, even in this pod. She can sense your surroundings somehow? Using your eyes? Any gray space entity can become the eyes and ears of the Hive Mother if she so chooses. Nor can I do anything to resist her will. I know that when she looks at me, she can see whatever I see. Right now, when the bulk of her attention is still focused on the Ennis artifact under the sea, I can maybe conceal a little bit of what I'm thinking from her, but I'm not sure how long that will last. What is this artifact under the sea that Ennis possesses? I don't know. I can't fully comprehend the will of the Hive Mother. All I know is she's calling me, and the call is getting stronger and stronger. She needs all of her millions of children to go and release her. Release her? The Hive Mother herself is currently imprisoned within a cage of black stone. But the power of the cage is gradually weakening. And when finally that cage is broken, the Hive Mother will re-emerge fully into our world. Age of Blackstone? Could it be deep under the sea at Innis? I can't get any kind of accurate sense of the Hive Mother's current location. Perhaps there is a pocket of abnormal space, like the confounding abyss near Innis. It's difficult to imagine what kind of person could have the power to cage the Hive Mother. But I suspect the Blackstone ruins left in the confounding abyss may be their handiwork as well. I don't know much about that. I have no access to the minds of those powerful abyssins. But as for the inferior, younger, gray space entities, they do not have the ancient memories of the Hive Mother, nor seek to continue her ancient grievances. I'm still trying to establish closer contact with them, and some kind of rapport. But I feel like the closer I get, the less human I become. I just don't know if I can. If I can. Rubilia? The stasis chamber's readout has returned to normal. Her consciousness is fading. Listen carefully. She is keeping a close eye on me. I have to retreat back into the fog. 
She can use all my senses for her own purposes. Only the fog blocks her vision. Innes, you have to stop her. If what the doctor just said is true, then I'm afraid the entire region may not be the friendly human habitat we imagined. I will inform Hykros headquarters of what has transpired here and request urgent reinforcements. We will have to prepare for the worst. It doesn't look like the Doctor is capable of many conversations in her present state, Archon Larson. But she must know even more than what she's managed to reveal. Yes. We'll have to see whether we can minimize or cut off the Hive Mother's influence. It might help to stabilize her. Lyra, can I leave that to you? Dr. Clive will provide all the necessary resources. Yes, sir. For the time being, Dr. Rubilia will have to remain confined within her pod. We can't risk bringing her back to Meroria at this stage. Director Eva, an executor team led by Captain Merrill will help you shore up the research station's defenses. Yes, sir. As for inners, Lynn, can you organize a team to investigate? <clears throat> and if necessary, we may need to stagger an evacuation of Inner's population to Mororia. Understood. Time is against us. I suggest using the long-range space rift located within the station to reach Innis directly. And as for Rubilia, she's in your hands. Don't worry, Miss Lynn. We'll look after her. Very well. Executor, Shirley, let's go. Sorry for delaying your important mission, Lin. Is the space rift out of action? It seems so. Strange. It was working just fine five minutes ago. But then, when I was running some basic system checks, suddenly, I couldn't locate the space rift beacon in Innis. And why could that be? Well, we're running diagnostics to see if the machine is malfunctioning. But it could be a problem with the relay station or inner zone space rift. Yes, hello? Did you manage to get in touch with the technician in inners? Oh, what's that? Then. and outpost 10? Okay, got it. Bad news. Something's happened to outpost 10. We've lost contact with it. And where is outpost 10? In the ring shaped river valley not too far away. Outpost 10 is responsible for servicing our telecommunications and space rift networks with Innis. A problem of this magnitude with Outpost 10 means we've lost contact with Innis altogether. I don't think it's a coincidence. I suspect the Outpost may well have already come under Grey Space Entity's attack. Shelly, please inform Ms. Lyra about this at once. The Executor and I will investigate it personally. Okay, understood. Hear the news? Something's happened to Outpost 10. Don't tell me you're coming too. Of course I am. Archon Larson is quite concerned. I'll wait for you up ahead.
Any news? I've been trying to make contact with the outpost for a while, but there's no response. It seems something really did happen. Could it just be a problem with the outpost's communications equipment? If it was just an equipment malfunction, the outpost would have already gotten someone to inform us. We've heard nothing from them. But if the place had indeed come under Grayspace Entity's attack, the Executor there would have notified Headquarters right away. We haven't picked up any message of the sort. No request for reinforcements. Nothing. Unless... Unless what? Unless the Outpost's defenders were taken out so quickly that they didn't even have time to get a simple message out. But no ordinary Grayspace entity is capable of taking out an entire Outpost's Executor team and other defense personnel that quickly. Tian Long, which Executor is currently on duty there? I think her name is... Umi? Relatively new. I have only met her a couple of times. Let's go. We need to get to the bottom of this. Stay sharp, everybody. I'm detecting gray space entity activity nearby. So the outpost really was attacked.
District 7 Executor in Training Umi reporting. So you're Umi? Yes, Officer Lin. Just call me Lin. What happened to your outpost? Mororia has been unable to get in touch. I... I have just returned myself. I was ordered to hunt down several Grayspace entities en route to attack the outpost when I intercepted their distress signal. I hurried back immediately. Proper procedure requires that you immediately relay news of the attack on the outpost to headquarters. Leaving your post like that was not your call to make. I... I'm sorry, madam. Lin? And what of your colleagues at the outpost? I... I, I don't know. On my way back, I was soon ambushed by enemies. And after that, I encountered you. I'm detecting faint signs of life in one of the lower areas, as well as signs of gray space entity activity. The outpost should have a built-in safe house for emergencies. Maybe the survivors hid inside. Right! The safe house is located below. I'll take you there. is a special kind of gray space entity only recently discovered. Strange to find them here. Look! The missing personnel! Stop looking around. Get rid of the enemies first.
performed a thorough check. They appear to have simply passed out. No sign of injury or loss of life. They just passed out? Why would the gray space entities leave survivors? We've never seen anything like that before. It may be a characteristic unique to Hatchers. What do you think, Umi? Hmm? Uh... I've never seen one before, so I... I have no idea. Sorry. <sighs> Notify headquarters of what's happened, Tianlong. Ask them to send a crew at once to pick up the injured. Also, Shirley, are you still picking up nearby gray space entity activity? There are no more stable gray space entity signals nearby. Miss Shirley, you can detect gray space entities? That's extraordinary! Oh, it takes us a whole host of complicated machinery to accomplish the same thing. I've asked Shelly to make a few upgrades to my powers. I can't claim to detect them from very far away, but it does come in handy. Incredible. Do you think that I could also... Enough chit-chat. We've got a mission to do. Umi, do you think that the outpost's equipment is still in good working order? Headquarters has to re-establish contact with Innes ASAP. I... I'll have a look now! Let's also try to collect any clues we can nearby. We may have eliminated all the gray space entities within the outpost, but we still need to figure out exactly how they managed to mount such an effective assault. station. Weren't they built in the miasmic swamp ahead? Do you think they've also been attacked by the gray space entities? Mororia always set up important field equipment like that with defensive force fields. No ordinary gray space entities would have the power to break through that. What concerns me more is that the base station came under attack at the same time as this outpost. In other words, we are not dealing with random events, but a coordinated plan by Gray Space Entities with one clear goal. To cut off our connection to Innes. Do you really think the Gray Space Entities could... I mean, aren't they basically just wild animals running on instinct? Could they really pull off a coordinated maneuver like this? Umi, do you really think they are simply wild animals without reason? What do I think? I... I mean... I've only seen the most inferior of gray space entities. So... I really couldn't know. Uh, Tianlong, what's the word from headquarters? They've sent a team to take over the site. Archon Larson wants us to go ahead and look into the anomalous space station in the Miasmic Swamp. We need to restore the network as soon as possible. In that case... Can I volunteer to protect the outpost until they arrive? My colleagues are still unconscious. If the Gray Space entities launch another attack, they could be in terrible danger. No, you're coming with us. You know much more about what to expect in the Miasmic Swamp. And our highest priority right now is to repair the base station. Um, then, uh, how can we be sure that the outpost will remain safe? We've already eliminated the local Gray Space entities, and the team from headquarters should arrive any minute now. I don't think it's a problem. Um, in that case, I'll lead the way.
It should be just ahead. Very dense underbrush. Good to see the local ecosystem is thriving. That is true to an extent, yes. A lot of animal and plant species would consider this something akin to heaven. I wonder why Miroria never had the idea of setting up a settlement here. By heaven, I didn't mean one for humans. You notice the thin mist up ahead? That's not water humidity. It's an airborne toxin, harmful to humans. An airborne toxin? They once established an ecology research station here during the surface recolonization era. The place was home to quite a number of species human scientists had improved through genetic engineering. The gray space entities destroyed the station sometime later, setting the station's experiments loose into the surrounding environment. Most of the species quickly adapted, and indeed soon evolved into something approximating a fairly holistic ecosystem. Unfortunately, one of the accidental byproducts of this new ecosystem was a deadly toxin. Rainfall and high humidity disperse a lot more of the toxin into the air. In short, it's become a terrible place for human habitation. Can I ask you how you came to know the history of the area, Officer Tianlong? 
No. I just heard it in passing from some friends who had been stationed here. You know, it's a real shame. The place is obviously... Let's chat about this later. Right now, Umi. We need your help navigating this complex terrain. Great! There are three signal base stations here. Come with me. often see gray space entity activity around here? We might come across a few wandering gray space entities from time to time, but not so many at once. These are the least of my worries. What we should be concerned with is what may be waiting for us ahead. Oh. There's not going to be some big, powerful monster watching us from the shadows, is there? I've never gone up against Abyssins before. Whatever the danger is, that's why we're here. Umi, you're going to have to lead the way. Officer Lin, I suggest we split up for the next section. Is that so? The three base stations are located in different parts of the Miasmic Swamp. Going one by one will take a long time. It may be better to split up and handle all three at once. But we're not familiar with the terrain here. It could be dangerous if we don't stick together. True, but we don't have the luxury of time. Right now, our orders are to repair the base stations ASAP. I think Umi has a good point. All right. It makes sense to work quickly. Then I'll provide everyone with a map of the area. There you go. Umi, how do you think we should split up? Eh? Me? You're the local expert. Your suggestion carries a lot of weight. I would say... Base stations 1 and 3 are near our present location. Officer Lin and Tian Lung, you could probably handle these two respectively. Base station 2 is the furthest, so as the local expert, I think I can lead Shirley and the Executor to tackle that one. And we should be more than capable of eliminating any gray space entities we may find along the way. Oh, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, I don't think that would be very smart. Why is that? Mainly because I'm not... I mean... I don't have a good head for directions. Shirley and I will handle Base Station 1. Umi, you take the Executor and Tian Long to Base Station 3. Then, if everything works out just fine, we can all rendezvous at Base Station 2. And what if we run into trouble? You should be able to handle yourself, right? Well... When you put it like that, let's go.
Okay, guys, that's gonna be it for this one. As usual, don't forget to smash those buttons. Also, guys, don't forget. I can see there are quite a few of you watching on the PlayStation Network. If you could also please follow through your mobile device or computer or anything else but a PlayStation. I would really appreciate it. But thanks for watching. Until then, catch you later.